Lately, everyone's talking about super smart AI or AGI. 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 But AGI. AGI. An AGI. An AGI. 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 Like it's just a year or two away, not some far off future anymore. Elon Musk, while playing Diablo, chatted with some players and shared his thoughts about AI and robots. Say 2026 at the latest for AGI, roughly 1% chance of civilization ending in any given century. It's interesting to think what will it actually look like. Soon, AGI might be able to do tricky stuff like cleaning a cheese grater or counting all traffic lights in a big turn. But the race for AGI isn't just between companies, it's between countries too. The US sees China as its biggest rival in this and wanted to stay on top. Remember when Altman emailed Musk in 2015 saying they should do a Manhattan project for AI? Well, now US-China relations group is telling Congress to start a Manhattan-style project for AGI looks like an AI race is getting even more serious. Make Skynet American again. Honestly, this AI race between countries is like the Olympics, but instead of medals, we might end up with a robots that decide it doesn't need us anymore. But everyone has their own idea of what AGI is. For example, in a Swiss church, you can confess your sins to an AI Jesus. In Luzon's oldest chapel, the confession booth now has a computer with an AI-generated image of Christ ready to hear your sins in over 100 languages. I guess if you confess to something violent or um, spicy, it might reply with This content may violate our terms of use or policies. Microsoft created an AI-generated version of St. Peter's Basilica so people can visit it virtually. They took over 400,000 photos of the building using drones, cameras and lasers and AI turned it into a digital replica. Fun fact. The virtual basilica is huge like a real one, 22 petabytes. That's like 22,000 iPhones with a one terabyte of storage each. I need this storage for my travel photos. Microsoft says this is one of the most advanced and complicated projects of its kind. The AI model is so detailed that it includes things the human eye can't even see. The fight for AI dominance is heating up again, and now it's back to being a battle between tech giants. Amazon is investing four billion dollars into Anthropic. AWS will now be the main place where Anthropic trains its models. And yeah, Amazon got Anthropic to start training on the training chips, which will help improve those chips and maybe even make them rentable for other companies. It's a win-win. Anthropic gets funding and Amazon push its chips. Seems like Amazon might be more excited about competing with Nvidia than just building its own AI tools. Anthropic hasn't become a leader yet but they are carving out a solid spot in the AI world. Over the past year, their market share has doubled more than anyone else. Next year, though, the competition will get even tougher, not just from OpenAI and XAI, but also from startups focused on AI-powered coding assistants like Cursor. Right now, coding is one of the biggest use cases for AI. Meanwhile, Mistral is trying to keep up. They are finally launched their chatbot, LeChat. They're promising all premium features of ChatGPT at no cost. The interface looks like a straight-up copy, but the quality still need works. Maybe they just need some time. Another area hidden up is the browser wars. OpenAI announced they're building their own browser to compete with Chrome. They already released a Chrome extension that sets up ChatGPT as the default search tool. Thinks they're joking? <laughs> no. OpenAI even hired two ex-Google employees who played key roles in building Chrome. But the threat to Google isn't just coming from OpenAI. Perplexity is rolling out an AI-powered shopping assistant. Now you can search for and buy products directly in Perplexity. It's kind of like Google Shopping, except Perplexity claims their product listings don't have ads or sponsored recommendations, unlike Google, right? But Aren't they just the ones who just announced they're switching to an ad-based business model? They're also adding image search similar to Google Lens and promise free shipping. Pretty cool. Perplexity is evolving from just an AI search tool into something bigger. Meanwhile, China's deep sea, despite limited resources, is still producing world-class models. Their new model, R1 Lite, scores almost as high as OpenAI's O1 preview in benchmarks and even outperforms it in some areas. DeepSeek says this is just the beginning and hints at even more powerful models coming soon. On benchmarks, R1 Lite is bad at coding and math, but falls behind in other tasks. 
You can try it out on their website with a deep think mode. They give you 50 messages a day for free. It's true what they say, the more limitations you have, the more creative you get. There is never a week without updates from OpenAI. It seems like staying in the spotlight is their top priority, but honestly, it's working. Advanced Voice is now available not just in the app, but also on the web. They also updated GPT-40, claiming it has improved creative writing abilities. This came in response to Google's new model, which suddenly took the top spot in AI rankings, pushing OpenAI aside. The new OpenAI model is faster but less intelligent, despite ranking high in Arena. But how is that possible? Models are often trained to meet Arena's specific benchmarks which doesn't always translate to better real-world performance. From personal experience, I'd say since the launch of GPT-40 Mini, the model has been getting worse with each update compared to its previous versions. That said, it's still way ahead most compares in terms of response quality. For now, 11 Labs is done being just a text-to-speech tool. They're leveling up and now let you create your own voice agent. You can choose the agent's primary language, Set the first message, system prompt, model, Gemini, ChatGPT, Claude, or even your own, to pick the response temperature and set token limits. Plus, you can upload your own knowledge base. Companies can set rules for data collection, like asking for a client's name and email, and use natural language to evaluate how successful calls are. Coming soon to customer support everywhere. Unlike the other tech giants, Meta has taken the open source route for AI, but now it's time to monetize. Meta is launching a whole new division to create AI tools for businesses on WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook. Wanted to run an ad? AI will do it and adapt it for different platforms. Need a customer support chatbot? No problem. Meta can build one based on a llama. If you ask the new Siri to text your girlfriend saying you love her, she will write, I love her. But who is her? That's for us humans to figure out. <laughs> Maybe that's why Apple is working on a new version of Siri, LLM Siri. Right now, Apple AI is fully powered by OpenAI, and it's unclear who benefits more from this deal. But it looks like Apple wanted to build its own AI in the future. The new Siri is supposed to be more chatty and natural, like that friend who always has something to say. But it's not coming until 2026, by which time AGI might have taken over anyway. Flux has another update. They have launched Flux Tools, a set of AI-powered image editing tools. So now you can edit photos directly, like in Photoshop. Basically, it's everything made Johnny and Recraft already do. And if you ever get bored, why not draw cartoons with your Ryan roots? What? Yeah, some guy in Toronto spends a year running to create a cartoon using his GPS roots. He ran a total of 1,105 kilometers over 100 hours for his masterpiece. That's all for today. See you next week. Bye.